Okay, so I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes walking you through the directions, what you'll get with the graphics package, just how to get grounded in the project, basically so that you know what's going on and you feel comfortable getting ready and starting on your own way. So over here I have a PowerPoint, and this is actually something that you'll get as soon as you click the link below. When you do click the link below, just click segue and click get this, you're gonna have the opportunity to download that PowerPoint, which will give you all the information, including extra directions, and you'll also receive a link to the Eventbrite, which is the Zoom Sip and Showcase information, which is happening on November 29th at 5 p.m. So all of that for $10, you'll click get this. So quick note, once you actually open up the graphics package, this is where you'll have another opportunity to RSVP for the event if you haven't already. So you can click this, and this is actually gonna pop you over to Eventbrite where you can grab that ticket. So no extra payment is required upon like the 10 bucks that you've already paid, but you'll have the opportunity to register here, get all the information and uh, access the event from here. So back to where we were over here in PowerPoint. So this is the graphics package. It's also gonna give you all the directions that you need to really start to get going. So for this month, um, as you'll see, we'll be creating our slide-by-slide -slide gratitude carousel. Here you'll have the opportunity to actually click and see an example of what this looks like. This is my published version, which I published to Articulate 360 Review. And as you can see, here it is. So we've got some buttons here, back and next, just some basic interactivity, again, with this one by one square canvas size. So I'll show you how to do that, um, but that's ultimately what we're working toward, okay? So then if we come back over here to PowerPoint, here are the deliverable goals. You're gonna tell a step-by-step -step story about seven things that you're grateful for, or if you wanna really kind of go off book, just seven things, right? Um, we are hoping to use that one by one canvas, so a square canvas in order to achieve this. You'll include a title slide, a wrap up slide, and seven individual slides. You can include as much detail as you'd like or keep it really basic, like my example. And then the final deliverable can be a PDF, which has all nine slides. It could be published to Rise. It could be published to Storyline as mine is. It could even be a PowerPoint or a Google slide. So basically the goal is to just create those nine slides in sequential order that tells your gratitude story. If you add an extra layer of interactivity, fabulous, but it's not required. We're gonna be using three specific fonts for this exercise. We have a serif, which is kind of more of a slab serif, uh, Zilla slab. We've got a sans serif, which is urbanist, and then a script font, which is Bilbo. And I know for those who know me, I'm not a huge fan of using script fonts, but in this case, I actually think it looks kind of elegant, right? We're talking about the season, we're talking about holidays, I'll let us get away with it for this time. Um, seasonal gratitude seems to make it okay. So the idea is that you can download each of these on Google Fonts and use maybe one, possibly two. You could go all three if you're feeling really grateful for typography, but so really I would say one or two. Um, hopefully staying within the same font family. If you're using just one, you might use a thicker or a lighter weight of each. So if I were to click say Zilla Slab, this is gonna pop open Google Fonts, which is where I'll have the opportunity to download the entire font family. And as you can see, right, we have a few different options here. So it could be really nice to use a much heavier version, maybe for the heading with a much lighter version or possibly um, even italicized version for the body. Um, of course, you can mix and match like I did. So that's the typography. Over here, we have four color palettes to choose from. So I'm hoping that you can choose one and work within these palettes. These are all really seasonal. They look nice together, but you can see the emphasis and the proportionality is different, right? On this bottom one here, we have a much lighter sort of dominant background, whereas on one of these two, we have that darker color kind of coming forward. So my thought here is just consider the proportionality. If you wanna mix it up, feel free, but definitely stick within one of these palettes. And then here we have all of these graphics. So what's fun is that these graphics can be converted into shapes and then also recolored however you'd like to do that. So I provide some instructions on how to actually convert the graphics to shape here. So let me actually show you how that works with a very simple one. Maybe I'll grab this. And if I right click, I click convert to shape. And now all of a sudden I have the ability to really color this however I'd like. All right, so every single one of these has the opportunity to be recolored and just right click and then if you want to convert to shape, all of a sudden now I have the ability to again work with each of these individual pieces to maybe recolor them or mix them about as I'd like. So complicated, 
more robust graphic like this, obviously there's a lot going on here. Um, but you have the opportunity to really play around. So don't feel restricted if you see something that you like and say, you know, it's this coffee mug, but you're like, oh, but I really wish the coffee mug was a different color. Well, it absolutely can be. Again, you'll right click, convert to shape, and now you'll have the opportunity, I will always say ungroup, you'll have the opportunity to really mix things up, right? So that's a lot of fun. So these are the graphics. We have, uh, I think maybe seven or eight different pages, um, basically all seasonal, fall, uh, things. We have some just kind of more abstract shapes here that you'll often see maybe in something like Canva. Uh, some line images here, some line graphics here, which could be really fun if you were really grateful for, say, you know, a family recipe that's been passed down, or you want to tell a step-by-step -step progression about a recipe, for example. Um, a few other things here. And then for those who did the October challenge, you'll see a couple of these have been reused. Here's our famous fox again, uh, which I know a few of us had a lot of fun playing with, and then just some leaves, which I know were used before as well. So the idea here is to really lean into the gratitude component here, not so much Thanksgiving, um, but gratitude, right? So do with this as you will. And then lastly, we have this section, which is photos. And so the prompt requires you to use one of these photos, at least, at least one, um, one of these preset photos. These are huge. So I actually linked to all of these photos in Google Drive separately. So go ahead and open this up. And as you double click here in Google Drive, you can see what they all look like. It'll take a second to preview. They are large. So the idea is that you'll choose one of these, at least one for your project, right? So you've got some options here. So that is the graphics package. It's a lot to play around with. Honestly, you could do so much with this in and of itself. So if you wanna just download this and play and maybe not even participate in this challenge, I think it's still probably uh, worth doing so and just kind of stretching yourself. So again, we're working with that one by one slide ratio, but you can do whatever you'd like if you wanna go above and beyond and make other things, you know, full blown course, maybe a slide deck. Um, you could have a lot of fun with this. So, so this is the graphics package. If you want the full directions, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click here, get full directions here. And this is gonna walk you through step-by-step step everything that you'll need to do in order to participate in this challenge. Okay, so we have what the deliverable is. Again, that one nine slide, one by one ratio story, including an intro slide, a wrap up slide, and seven content slides in the middle. Uh, so let's see what that looks like, which is over here. So we have our intro slide, we have seven content slides and you can see i've used a progress indicator here which you should do it's it's pretty fun um, that really continues to build on itself so we have those extra leaves coming through right um and then a final wrap-up slide which is a call to action so that's what you're working with i share my my example here and then what's really fun is when we actually get to see kind of the method behind the madness. So I've asked that we each do a process document and pop this into a shared Google Drive folder, which you'll have the opportunity to take a peek at. But here is where you can put your source files so that other people can actually see what you've done. I linked my PowerPoint, I linked my storyline. I chose this specific palette. I said that I used this vector image. I just used the one and I recolored it using the same process that I showed you earlier. I used this one photo. I used two different uh, styles of Zilla Slab, and then I used this script here. And then I just walked through my initial ideas and creative process. So if you see that template over here, you can do the exact same. That's kind of the fun in this, right? So even if you aren't able to participate in the Zoom call, we can still see what your process is. Here it is. So I basically started kind of compiling all of my things together. I like to whiteboard. I often do, you know, some basic sketches first to really get myself grounded. Um, but then I translated that over here and just started to kind of put some words on screen, lay things out. So I explained my creative process and then really my aha, this is it layout, here it is, right? And so then I kind of walked through what it is that I did, added with my call to action, and then I of course added these little arrows, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the next video. The submission that you finally submit needs to include vector images, color palettes, and fonts from the graphics package, which is over here, right? That's number one. Number two, nine slides in total. So that title slide, the seven content slides, and the wrap-up slide. Some 
level of interactivity, which you'll see with mine is these arrows. Um, that would be fantastic if you could do that. If you actually don't have Rise, if you don't have Storyline, if you don't have any ability to create real interactivity with what it is that you're doing, that's totally okay. It would just be fantastic if you could think through what that might look like for you. So for me, let's say I didn't have the opportunity to pop this into Storyline. I just did a separate version here where you can see I've got these arrows. I'm thinking through what that process might look like. So that's what I'm challenging you to do. A progress indicator of some type, especially if your slide is the exact same in the middle, um, like mine kind of was, kind of get lost there. It's this, it, we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Um, and it's meant to be playful and fun. This is these things that I've included here. Like, I do love all these things. Um, this is maybe a little too gee, um, but the point is here really not to so much focus on the gratitude, but it's to focus on the process and the design process and what it is that we were able to do. So again, I used my palette. I popped in this photo. I have my vector art here. These I added in Storyline, but I'll talk more about that in the next video. But this is the process, right? Like this is where we're ultimately trying to get to. That story that we're telling, that gratitude that we're feeling all in this one by one ratio story. So full directions are here. Um, I do say that there's a competition element. Last time we didn't really partake in this so much just because I feel like when we do this, we're all winners. But some things to think about as you're designing. Most quirky, most elegant, most detailed, most impressive evolution from the initial thoughts to the final product. That's so fun. And so the winners of these categories will be awarded as this month's star designers, which again, last month we were all star designers because we all partook, but this month, maybe we will, just depending on who actually shows up. Here are the step-by-step -step instructions. I'm actually gonna walk you through that in my next video. This is just showing you what you're getting yourself into when you start participating. So that's the challenge in more detail. In the next video, I'm gonna walk you through how I actually put everything together in PowerPoint. Let's see that soon.